Let me ask you a question first. What is the most complex system in our world? Airplane, skyscrapers, or computer? No, no, no. In my opinion, it is our brain. Why? Our brain contains 100 billion neurons and 100 trillion synapses. Moreover, despite its complexity, neurons connect with remarkable precision. A precise connectivity is orchestrated in vivo is not well understood. So, in order to investigate, we need to see it first. How can we do that? How about the microscope that we can observe cells? Okay, suppose that we want to see a neuron inside the brain. We have a light source to excite this neuron. As the fluorescent light goes back to a CCD camera, we can see this neuron directly. It is done. Oh wait, did we forget anything? Scattering. Unfortunately, our brain is not transparent, just the opposite. There are so many other neurons before this photon hits this neuron. What is even worse, when we illuminate the whole brain, other neurons will be fluorescent as well. This will increase background noise, and the image is blurred. One technique to solve this problem is light sheet microscopy, and this is what I will introduce in this video. Surprisingly, this technology was originally developed by Kaizai in 1903. However, 101 years later, Hoiskin rediscovered it for 3D fluorescent image in biology. What is light sheet? First, let's consider the simplest example, lens focus. A parallel light heater lens, ideally, it will focus on the focal point and defocus again. In fact, this is like a Gaussian beam. The position where the beam width is smallest and the intensity is largest is called light width. Now, if we consider this in three dimension, the lens becomes a cylindrical lens. The light beams going through the lens will focus in one dimension and become a light sheet. Unlike conventional microscopies, this one can select only one plane near the light width to illuminate and observe. That's why this is also called selective plane illumination microscopy. Now, let's have a look at the whole microscope system. The laser provides our collimated beams. Two mirrors help to do alignment, and the beams go through a squared aperture to help beam shaping. A very simple setup would be used a cylindrical lens to create a light sheet, just like what I have mentioned before. The sample is located at the light width of the light sheet, fixed by transition stage. These three computer-controlled transition stages move the spacemen along three dimensions, and one rotary stage rotates the spacemen. Then, an object lens gets the fluorescent light at 90-degree angle to illumination axis. A single emission filter blocks the exciting light and transmits the fluorescent signal. The primary image is formed by the camera via a tube lens. Finally, the control unit operates the hardware and controls the data acquisition process. In sum, this system consists of four basic units which adjust illumination of the spaceman, transition and rotation of the spaceman, light detection, and finally, control of mechanical parts and data collection. You might be confused why we need to do transition. Every time we do measurement, we actually capture neurons in a particular plane, then moving the spaceman a little bit. We can capture neurons in another plane. Step by step, we can obtain all the neurons in this spaceman and have a totally 3D reconstruction. As for the rotation, it can help us to have multiple views. First, we capture the spaceman at this angle, then rotate the sample and capture another image. In this way, we could observe the same spaceman independently along different directions and then use digital image processing techniques to fuse different images into a single high-quality image. Now, let's talk about the strength of this technique. First, the signal-to-noise ratio is pretty good. On the one hand, light sheet microscopy minimized image sharpness while at the same time minimize the level of background noise. Particles that are not located within the object's depth of the field are not illuminated on the other hand, the illumination and image system are orthogonal to each other, 
which means that the illumination source will not influence the quality of the image. Second, the acquisition speed is very high. This microscopy collects the image for all pixels of our two-dimensional grids in parallel. This allows a much longer per pixel measurement times at identical frame rate. Third, bleaching is low. It concentrates light only where exciting is needed, thus maximizing the efficiency of illumination source. As a result, it reduces the phototoxic effects and bleaching. This means that they can be observed over long time period than ever before. Light sheet microscopy is a very popular technique currently, and there are many new designs springs out to improve its performance. For example, in order to improve its spatial resolution, structured illumination is implemented. This clearly reduces the effects of the scattering light and improves the contrast, especially in strong scattering spacements. For the temporal resolution, there is a standard laser light sheet microscopy. The idea behind it is to generate a plane of light with a laser scanner that rapidly moves light vertically and horizontally through the spacement. Light sheet microscopy is a revolutionary technique that now we can perform experiments that were not possible before. Let's see what will happen next.